There are two things I hate more than almost anything else on earth. One are military officers who violate their oath of office. And two are financial fraudsters and scammers preying on the vulnerable. And somehow I found a story that takes the two worst things on planet earth and mashes them together in order to maximize their ability to enrage me. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about, that's right, an army officer who bilked gold star families out of millions. Okay, so this story is absolutely the, d depression maxing. If that's what your goal is to do, it covers a former army staffer accused of a fraud scheme targeting gold star families. Now, traditionally, the word gold star family started in World War II, and it designated families, the immediate family members of soldiers who were killed in action. But that definition has now expanded to include uh, all, any service member who is killed uh, or dies in the line of duty or while on active duty. And so this federal prosecutors have charged a Army Reserve Major, Kaz Craffy, or Kraz Caffey, on 10 counts, including wire and securities fraud, accusing them of swindling bereaved Army families out of their life insurance payment. Now, to understand this, you have to understand that when a service member dies, uh, the army does not simply cut that family loose and say, good luck, right? That's what your civilian employer does. But the army says, listen, first off, you're entitled to service members group life insurance, SGLI. And that payday is meant to ensure that those families can live and survive uh, without their loved one's income. It's also meant to help the same things that any life insurance policy does, help for burial, et cetera. But the army does more than that. It does more than just send you a check. Because if you know people, you know, especially in the global war on terror era, that a lot of those families were young. Imagine you're a 22-year-old uh, spouse with a, a, you know, a one or two-year-old, and someone sends you a check for half a million dollars, right? That's a lot of money. And sits there and they to tell that person, hey, you have to figure out how to make this last for the, your family for years to come. Oh, and by the way, you've got to bury your loved one. So because they're in such a vulnerable state, the army, in its infinite wisdom, instituted what they called uh, the Army Casualty Assistance Program. I'm going to try to see if I can find it in the article here that describes it. Essentially, Army Casualty Assistance Program uh, is meant to, well, help casualties the who people who are killed in action, or again, a service member who's deceased, missing, or whereabouts unknowns. The CAO's role is to advise and assist the primary next of kin or other designated eligible recipient with things ranging from uh, processing and making sure they get the, the benefits they're owed, uh, assisting in the uh, preparing a funeral and returning remains. Because remember those remains, let's say you are killed in a car accident in Europe. Now, you have to have that grieving family figure out how to do an international repatriation. Yikes. Also making sure that they get all the benefits they're entitled to, right? Including uh, there's many benefits that are reserved for the kids of Gold Star families, um, spouses, um, right? Entitlements, benefits, counseling, military funeral honors, coordinating with the military base to ensure that there's a military honor at the funeral. And of course, training subordinate uh, casualty notification officers. Those are the people who, uh, you know, in all the movies, knock on the doors. So the Army Casualty Assistance Program is actually has some pretty important functions. But one of them, you noticed, was making sure soldiers get the benefits they're entitled to. And that is what this Army Reserve Major named Kaz Caffey was hired to do. He was hired to ensure that these families received their life insurance payment in a timely fashion and knew what to do with it. But here's where things go sideways. Caffey, this guy here, right? Caffey was, had a, another side hustle as a financial advisor. The problem is, is that in his capacity with the casualty assistance office, he was prohibited. The army says, listen, we're the government. We can't recommend any financial service. We can't recommend any financial investment, right? It's like the SEC. Imagine if the SEC had a press conference and was like, ape fat bags into Bed Bath & Beyond, you nerds, right? That would be, that would get them sued 
because who are they to say one investment is better than another? The only things that they can say is that these investments are fraudulent or misrepresented themselves or misfiled, right? They're regulators. They're not investment professionals. But Caffey or Craffy, he was by day army casualty assistants who would just say, hey, let me make sure you get your life insurance payment. And then by night, he was, as Caffey, a financial advisor. Financial advisor. So Caffey goes, and when these families come to him, having lost a loved one, Caffey would may say, man, wow, you've got a big, a big old payment coming to you. You should invest some of it. And in fact, I know a guy. That guy is me. And here's the thing. Craffy would sit there and he would have these Gold Star families, when they signed the paperwork to receive their life insurance payout, he would slide his own financial firm's paperwork inside, right next to the Army's official paperwork. So those families would sit there and go, I thought I was doing something that the Army required me to do because an Army official told me, an Army officer told me these things. But unbeknownst to the Army, Caffey was working with two different financial investment firms and encouraged beneficiaries to invest their survivor benefits in accounts he managed. So what did Caffey do, right? Because, you know, he maybe is a savvy financial advisor. Maybe he's going to make sure these families, he just wants the best for him, and he's the best. Well, from 2018 to 2022, Caffey obtained nearly $10 million from Gold Star families in accounts he privately managed, according to the Justice Department. Now, here's where things, here's where your sus meter should start to rise, right? First off, it says that he earned $1.4 million in commissions from executing trades without the family's authorization. You may notice that if you got $10 million and you've pulled out $1.4 million in commission, that means you're having 15% management fees, which is bananas. To give you a perspective, if you were to take one of the most popular ETFs, right? Uh, this is an exchange-traded fund that simply takes, uh, you know, the aggregate of the uh, S&P 500, right? And you were to just put it in the good old SPY. Oh my God, please stop. Let me pull this up. Sorry. Of course, State Street's trying to get me to do their nonsense. But here you go, SPY. Just by investing in the good old S&P 500. The net expense ratio is not 1%. It's not one-tenth of 1%. It is nine five hundredths of a percent not or it's it's nine no it's not even not it's nine point five hundredths of a percent that's what typical management fees are so to give you an idea right and if you're a hedge fund manager if you are the elite of the elite one of the best in the world you might you might be entitled to like two percent of assets under management so Caffey's out there charging seven times what an elite hedge fund manager would charge and something on the order of, oh, what's that? A hundred to 150 times what the good old S&P 500 trade uh, charges. But again, if you deliver returns, good on you. But he didn't. Those accounts lost $3.7 million. He lost 37 cents of every dollar that those families gave him. So the level of dirtbaggery is just absolutely unbelievable. Now we're going to talk about just how and what investments this savvy hero made. But first, of course, if you're looking to invest your time and energy into something that's going to offer a return, I would encourage you, as your caffeine advisor, don't meme stock your way into some shitty energy drink loaded with caffeine, right? I get it. The packaging looks cool. Energy drinks have dope packaging. But why not consider the better alternative, strike gum? This is the 
This is the S&P 500 of caffeine. Why? Because this pack has 90 milligrams of caffeine in every piece. That means this has the caffeine of five energy drinks. But unlike a Red Bull or an Amp Energy, it has no sugar. So there's no sugar crash. You can go to strikegum.com and get your investment today. It's not investment advice. I'm kidding. This is a parody. But it is, this is an actual awesome energy drink alternative. It's not an investment. It's not going to grow in value. But what it will do is give you the caffeine you need to get shit done. And again, the five pack is going to give you the equivalent of 25 energy drinks. That would cost you, what, 125 bucks at the gas station now? And you can get it for 25 bucks. Strikegum.com. Check it out. Link is in the description, as always. So, even Kathy admitted this is this is actually the press release from the uh, the Justice Department when they charged this guy, right? And he admitted that he took advantage. He pled guilty. He said he took advantage of his role as an Army financial counselor to play prey upon the families of fallen service members in their most vulnerable moment using lies and deception, right? Craffy, Kathy, Craffy. He this guy switches his name up all the time. There's probably more scams that he was running that weren't even talked about because there's something weird about this dude's name. He's Kaz Kathy, Kraz Craffy, Kaz Craffy, Kraz Kathy. Craffy disgraced his position and trusted care for our nation's military families. He took advantage of them in a time of grief. And from November 2017 to January 2023, so pretty recently. He was a civilian in the U.S. Army, working as a financial counselor for the Casualty Assistance Office and was providing general financial education to surviving beneficiaries. But he was not pro- he was prohibited from offering any personal opinions regarding the beneficiaries' benefits decisions, like where to invest it. And he acknowledged he was not permitted to participate personally in any government matter in which he had an outside financial interest. Yikes. And without telling the army, Craffy maintained outside employment with two separate financial advisory firms. Now, what did he invest in? Well, it took me a little bit of digging, but Caffey was a Wall Street Bets guru. That's right. This idiot invested in every dumbass meme investment you possibly can. In this podcast, they say number four, he engaged in what they're calling concentration and lack of diversification. It's kind of the same thing. He invested in securities. Bitcoin is a commodity. I'm already not loving this guy, but instruments like Bitcoin, AMC, GameStop. The whole meme stock world exists out there, and Caffey was loving it. But it is highly speculative. And again, this wasn't money that he could YOLO. This was meant to ensure families who didn't have, a lot of cases, their primary wage earner. The primary income was gone, and he YOLO'd it into GameStop? Lads, and let's see. Here's, here's what should depress you. Is it again? Maybe he got into GameStop in 2018, 2017. But if he YOLO'd it in 2021, by the time it got to 2023, guys, it was trading at about half of what it did. So the fact that he only lost a third of their money is... Almost impressive. It's not impressive. Because again, I want to point out that if he had done the good old S&P 500, you can see he would have gotten in at 278 and it just, it, it, it would have doubled. If he had just not done anything, he literally put in more effort to get a worse result. Classic. Same thing with BTC. He had bought buying Bitcoin. You can see that if he bought in 2021 during the meme stock craze like an idiot, that at best, if he got out, he got they said he stopped in January 2023, which would put him right here, guys. 50% losses. It's almost like he knew that they were gonna lose, go down by 50%. Here's the other thing he did. He he bilked these guys. They called it strip mining. And what he did is he didn't just buy it and hold it. He got commissions on every trade. And so he would run trades and trades and trades. He'd sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy, earning a commission every time without even telling the families he was doing it. So again, this is, 
this is obviously a violation of this dude's oath of office. This is also, but the real failure here is the army. How did the army, how did nobody in the army figure out that this was happening? How did no one in the military sit down and say, yo, none of these Gold Star families mentioned to anyone else that they were invested with an army casualty assistance officer, the person who had filled out the paperwork to get the money? The fact that the army allowed this to go on for five plus years is absolutely insane. And again, a testament to the fact that the, the bureaucracy itself, it, it, it just is so hard to navigate. It's hard to navigate if you have a clear mind and clear eyes, and it's so much harder if you're grieving. And it's just truly an awesome sign of uh, just the level of brokenness. And I, you know, I'm just going to add my own commentary here. I, in my entire life, of everyone I've ever known, I would just say that uh, none have had a financial advisor where I've said, this person has your best interest at heart. One time, one time, I think my in-laws had a good financial advisor, set him up. I think he did the right thing for him. But even that could just be an accident. It just so happens that the product he might have been selling was exactly the product they needed. So he maybe did right by them by total accident. But... To me, this is like emblematic of the disaster that is like the financial advising in, in, industry. I can tell you, I had my retirement financial advisor and the dude was absolutely terrible. Like his trading decisions made no sense. I expressed some preferences for how I wanted things to invest in. in they, it was just absolutely preposterous. And again, when you put in all this effort and all these trades and do all this stuff for the same outcome as just buying the S&P 500, buying an ETF and setting it and forgetting it, you really wonder what these guys are doing if they're not all scammers. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. Huge thank you to the Colonel Tier members of Combev at News.com, particularly James Jerling, Steve Moran, Doug Beck, Alan Knudsen, Bastian Himmerling, Yanko, Georgie F. Dale McCombs, as well as our Lieutenant Tier members. I could not do this without you guys. I appreciate you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.